Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Alicia Female Fan. Steve Alicia is here with the Cricket Splendor. But before we get to that, thank you so much to all the new subscribers. Getting oh so close to 5,700 as of the taping of this video. If you've been loving the tech old and new, go ahead and give that subscribe button a tussle. It certainly means a lot to me. So I saw a tweet a few days ago that Target and Walmart had newer devices in the $50 price range in stock. And it was this one from Cricket Wireless, the Cricket Splendor, $50. So I wanted to go ahead and give it a shot because I do love getting a hold of affordable technology and seeing what they actually provide. And I don't make a habit of watching other people's reviews of devices before I do my review of a device because I don't like other people's ideas and words bleeding into my own thoughts on a device. But when it comes to devices in this price range, there's not a lot of coverage. So I do watch reviews and I it made me visibly upset that people were speaking ill of this device merely because of the price point and the fact that yeah okay it doesn't perform as well as an S21 Ultra well of course it doesn't it's not a thousand dollars we're talking fifty dollars okay but what it does do it does the basics it does them well and it's going to get you through and we'll talk about why at the end of the video but it's going to do the job that it was meant to do and it's going to do it affordably and that's what i like so let's talk about what you do get for your 50 dollars because it is quite a lot number one 6.5 inch display 720p which is quite nice i'm going to come back to that in a moment i had to put a ram thing on here to to tell it kind of felt like three gigs of ram and that's what i would expect the minimum to be for this device when it gets to the two gig range you're talking one of those android go 10 go devices which I, I tend to avoid if possible but you got three gigs of ram here 32 gigs of internal storage but but expandable storage up to 128 gigs so that's something that you certainly don't get on flagship devices anymore headphone jack quite nice usb-c charging you got your speaker down there no issues with that 3500 milliamp hour battery which would, because of the USB-C charging, you can get it topped off you know, from zero to 100. You're going to look at about two hours for charging. But once fully charged, you're going to get about five and a half to six hours of screen on time. And that's without even trying. If you did battery saving stuff, and it is a relatively stock version of Android. So you have battery saving features, stuff you could turn on that could extend that if needed. Let's talk about this display because it's one of the highlights of this phone for sure. Nice, big, bright Good contrast, good colors. I can tell you it's kind of an obscure reference, but this here for $50 has a better display, better LCD panel than the Nokia 5.3, which was five times the price. Five times the price. It's good. It is good readability in direct sunlight. It gets reasonably bright, especially when you're talking about the price point. $50 for a nicely colored, you got a nice display, it's bright. It's big. It's going to get the job done. 720p video, no problem whatsoever. Let's talk about performance with that 3 gigs of RAM because the other great point about this device is that you're getting Android 11. A lot of these devices in the budget range, the lower budget range, you're talking Android 10. So this one, for your $50, you're getting Android 11, which I thought was quite nice. And it runs well. It really does. Uh, when you think about how sometimes especially phones the way they used to be in this price point was an absolute just lag fest not the case here you know instagram runs well once it loads up you have no problems twitter is a little slower it's got some but it's had twitter on android to problem period ended i don't care about the price point of the device so the fact that there's an issue there is not really uh not really surprising facebook runs well you could get some light gaming with pokemon go facebook messenger WhatsApp and text messaging, a lot of times as well, when, when a device is under RAM, when you start to get to a gig of RAM or two gigs of RAM, typing has a lot of input delay. But because of the three gigs of RAM here, you're really not getting that. Typing was a nice experience. And I can tell you, just making phone calls. You know, a phone that makes phone calls. How? <laughs> what an impossible concept to consider. Worked well. Speaker phone was good and clear. The people on the other end could hear me. No issues whatsoever. It got it got loud without getting totally distorted for the people when I was listening on the other end to the speakerphone. Call quality was good. You're basically getting a nerfed version of the AT&T network. So if you've had them before, you can have no problem with Cricket, wi uh, Cricket Wireless and Wi-Fi calling. So you're going to get some future-proofing there. 
because you're going to have the voiceover LT. So when AT&T is done with its inquisition at the end of whatever and just eliminating phones left and right, basically Thanos, you know, with the snap, this will be still be there, still be able to run on the Cricket wireless network, which is quite good as well. And also, for security purposes, fingerprint scanner. And a lot of times when you get devices in this range, it doesn't work. But I can tell you, let's see if we could just kind of pull that up. Works well, takes a second, but go ahead, shove that, and it works. But it works better than the one on the Pixel 6 sometimes. I understand, look, it's not in display and all the rest, but $50 it has a finger, uh, fingerprint scanner and it works well. Front facing camera does okay. Build quality, solid. And I like the color. I like the fact that they put matte plastic instead of that shiny plastic on there. And it is solid. It's got some weight to it, which is good. Doesn't feel like it's going to break in your hand. The buttons feel solid, nice and clicky, volume up and down, no issues there. We'll talk about the camera. Look, it's going to take a representative image. You can see there's Gene there, the cat, the bowling alley, it took a decent image. In low light, it's going to get a little softer, but it's still going to get the job done. And that really, when you're talking at this price point, that's the most important thing. And I, who's it for? You're talking, think about it this way, $50 plus $30 for the service. So $80 all in and then $30 to refill it as you go. That gets you done. So if you're a student, if you're somebody, you're working a few jobs, stuff is tough out there. You know, I, we talk a lot about these expensive devices, but that's not a lot of the world right now. Inflation's starting to hit. Things are getting expensive. If you need something, if you're in a tough spot, or like I said, you're younger, or you're in a tough spot, you're just starting out, or whatever the case may be, you need something for a grandparent, an older elderly parent, you just want to send pictures back and forth, they want to do some basic web browsing, you want to get a kid started on the internet, something like this will get the job done. You want internet games, or basic games, you know, nothing nothing crazy. It'll get the job done there. No issues whatsoever. This is an impor important price point. And that's why it gets me so angry when people just kind of dismiss a device like this and say, well, what are you doing? It's a la laggy mess. And that, If you give it a chance, it's going to get the job done. It's solidly built. They're offering an Android 11 at a $50 price point. Now, nothing's completely cheap or free. You're going to have to deal with some bloatware. Right, you're going to have every version of Candy Crush Saga on here you can imagine. But once you boot it up, once you load it in, you take about 10 minutes, you go through each one, and you delete them, and then you got a relatively stock version of Android with everything that you'd want on here, and it could run stuff, and it runs it quite well. And you have all the options you can imagine. I think it even has screen record. I think it has screen record, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, screen recording on there, airplane mode, battery saver. LT, all the rest of it. And you can see, moving through the menus and stuff, it's a decent experience. And it's an important price point. I'm glad that Cricket's offering it there. You're not going to be able to use it other places, you know, so you're kind of locked into Cricket. But if you don't mind that and you're here in the United States and you just need something solid, you need something that's going to make the phone calls, make the text, WhatsApp, if you're from another country and you want to get in touch with people back home, Instagram, light social media, light gaming, browsing the web, which is all a lot of people can make phone calls, which is all people, a lot of people want. It's certainly going to get the job done. So ne don't dismiss something just because it's $50 and you think, well, it's cheap. You know, all these other iPhones and whatever are $800, $900, $1,000. So obviously this can't offer anything. This offers a lot. This offers a lot. And so as long as this channel's around, as long as I'm around, we're going to make sure that we review devices like this as well, because these are just as important, if not more important, than those bigger flagships. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-alicious day.